Baltimore Ravens face off against the Cincinnati Bengals this Thursday night in prime time at the bank. This is the second matchup of the year. Both offenses are balling right now. Are we headed towards another shootout? We dive into all the details of this matchup in this game preview episode of the Flock Rundown. Ravens Flock. Flock run down is the place to be. Motionless brain waves attempt to swim their way to sense can't tame the untamed. Appreciate you, Ray. What's up, Ravens fans? My name is Ryan, and welcome back to another episode of the Flock Rundown Game Preview episode. We got a weird week because the game's already coming on Thursday, so getting the Game Preview episode out today. I'm also traveling back home, and then we'll probably spend the day with some family tomorrow, and then I'm going to the game on Thursday, so I'm sure I'll see a lot of you guys there say what's up. There's also the NFL trade deadline that is 4 p.m. today. I have this video out before any news of the Ravens making a trade or the Bengals making a trade so not exactly sure if a trade will even impact this game since the game's on Thursday night I would imagine whatever trade is made is going to be kind of a separate conversation from this game because I highly doubt that bringing a guy in and then having one day or no day of practices that they're going to play in the game I'd be surprised so most likely whatever trade we do make hopefully we do make a trade is going to be for the Steelers game after this so I'm going to leave a lot of the trade talk out of this and just focus on the Ravens Bengals game this Thursday but elephant in the room is a trade deadline approaching and I am hoping that we get a pass rusher I think that that is by far the biggest weakness on this team and the biggest missing link and I feel like a stud pass rusher will take this Ravens team to another level but we can talk about that in the comments of this video if that does end up happening but let's lock in on this game Thursday night Ravens versus Bengals second time that they're facing off against each other this season we played in week five it was an absolute shootout 41 to 30 in overtime Ravens defense couldn't stop the Bengals offense at all and vice versa and uh, the Ravens were down 10 multiple times throughout that game but the Ravens offense just kept matching it the Ravens offense is still playing at a really high level just like they did in week five and the Bengals offense is still playing at a really high level just like they did in week five now there are some injury concerns mainly for the Bengals I think T Higgins and Orlando Brown and BJ Hill are all DNPs and I know T Higgins and Orlando Brown are meeting with trainers this week to see if there it's even a possibility for them to go. So we'll have to see how that plays out over the next few days. But those are key pieces for the Bengals, obviously, especially T. Higgins, man. If T. Higgins is not available in this game, I think that the Ravens secondary does have a lot better of a chance of slowing them down. I'm not saying we're going to stop them or even hold the Bengals to a low amount of points. But when you just have Jamar Chase as your main threat, and we don't have T. Higgins to worry about and the mismatches that he creates over there, I think uh, it gets a lot easier for the Ravens' secondary. So this would be a big loss if T. Higgins is not available. We obviously played T. Higgins and Jamar Chase in Week 5, and it was a nightmare for the Ravens' secondary. So Ravens' secondary hasn't played a ton better. I know they stepped up last week against the Broncos, but Bo Nix also missed three touchdown throws and Burrow is a much better player than Bo Nix at least right now at their stage of the career Burrow is light years ahead and his consistent accuracy is going to show up so obviously he's going to hit throws like that that Bo Nix wasn't hitting and our defense is still vulnerable in my opinion but T Higgins not being there does make it a lot easier you know we can double team chase we can throw a lot of attention his way if Higgins is out there I think we're going to see something similar to we week five and now I don't know if it'll be exactly that score 41 38 is kind of a crazy shootout I would expect a little less than that but this game script looks the same man the Ravens offense has proven it over and over again since that Bengals game that they are able to score at will last week against the Broncos dropped 41 on a top defense the Bengals defense is not that good that's the weakness of their team you know that's the Weakness of the Ravens as well right now, too, even though I believe that the Ravens defense can play a lot better than they are. There's a lot of big names, a lot of talent. So looking at this from a distance, it is easy to say that this game is going to go a very similar direction. But I think the biggest variable in this game is that both teams are seeing the other team for the second time. And that always leads to a little bit of a better game plan. Now, obviously, you need to have answers and you need to be able to counter some of those challenges that the other team is going to bring you. But it's not many surprises is when we just played each other in week five you know they saw our offense we saw their offense at the highest level really you know both offenses had an incredible day so 
there's a lot of film there for them to go study and attack and have some different answers in this game. And I think naturally that's going to lead to a little less point scored. I'm not saying it's going to be a low scoring game. I do not think that we'll get in the score prediction at the end. I think it's still going to be a higher scoring game. I just don't think it's going to be 41 38. I think both defenses can step up a little bit. If anything, I do trust the Ravens defense at home in prime time. It's a purple out. Everyone's wearing purple. We're debuting the new purple helmets. I know the Bengals are going to be ready too. You know, they, they don't have a great record. They're fighting for playoff position. They're fighting for a chance in this AFC North. So they have a lot to play for as well. But so do the Ravens, man. They're not sleeping on this game. They know it's a division game. The defense, especially, I think in this game has something to prove. I'm sure Cincinnati feels the same way. But I like our guys to step up at home in prime time. We saw that against the Bills, man. And I know the Bills don't have the same receiving core, but there's a different energy with Baltimore in prime time. The players come out to play at a different level. And I just feel like the Ravens defense, if any defense is going to step up, it's going to be that Baltimore defense in this game. Especially if T. Higgins isn't playing, then I really love our chances in this game. If T. Higgins is out there, they're still going to go crazy through the air. Our defense is going to let up a lot, a lot of passing yards. I think they just really got a hold in the red zone. We saw last week they were letting up a lot of passing yards. They were keeping a lot of stuff in front of them, and they were locking down in the red zone and not allowing the Broncos to score points. Easier said than done. I know the Bengals are a really good offense, and they're probably going to score some points. Joe Burrow threw five touchdowns against us. Last time we played, Joe Burrow threw five touchdowns last week. So I'm pretty confident that the Bengals are going to be moving the ball at will in this game. But does that lead to touchdowns? I think that's the defense's biggest job in this game for the Ravens is just hold up in the red zone, man. Force some field goals. And the Ravens' offense should continue to roll. I don't see that changing in this game. We put up 41 on this defense last time. And if anything, we got better, man. We added Deontay Johnson, who I think will be involved much more in this game plan. He's kind of an X factor for this game because we really haven't seen him. He did not play much in the Broncos game, which I'm not surprised. That was his first week he got here. He only had a few practices. Lamar wasn't even at most of those practices. So, There's a little bit more time now. I think Deontay Johnson will be a bit more involved than last week, and then we'll probably see you know, Deontay Johnson fully involved from then on. But the Ravens offense is truly multiple. The Bengals are not as multiple. I know last week against the Raiders, I think Chase Brown had 120 rushing yards. That's not happening against Baltimore. The Baltimore Ravens have the top run defense in the NFL and the Bengals are going to have to go through the air. And I'm sure they don't mind. It's not like the Bengals are afraid to do that or are not going to have success doing that. I think the Bengals are going to throw through the air often and uh, have some success doing so. But being a one-dimensional team versus the Ravens, which are truly multiple, it is truly a pick-your-poison offense. They can run with dominance with Derrick Henry. And then this play-action passing game, taking shots downfield to Zay Flowers, using the tight ends to create mismatches. I mean, the Ravens are multiple and are going to be able to have success in any way that the defense gives them. You know, last time we played the Bengals, they sold out to stop the run. Lamar went crazy through the air. Zay Flowers had a huge game. You know, are they going to do that again? We've been seeing a lot of teams sell out to stop the run, and it hasn't worked. So what are you going to do? Are you going to sell out to stop the run and let Lamar attack you with a lot of one-on-one matchups on the outside? Or are they going to run a little bit of a lighter box and then the Ravens can punish them on the ground? I don't know. I think teams will probably consistently try to bring pressure and stack the box and just force us to keep throwing, but it hasn't been an issue at all. So I don't really see them having the corners or the secondary to stop our receivers. Zay Flowers is uncoverable right now. Rashad Bateman is such a talented receiver receiver who can create separation. Deontay Johnson can create a ton of separation. Mark Andrews is always a mismatch, and I think this is going to be a bigger game for Mark Andrews because Isaiah Likely's banged up. I don't know if Isaiah Likely is even going to go. He barely played in the Denver game. He didn't practice today, even though it was a walkthrough, but Harbaugh kind of alluded that the hamstrings bothering him, and we'll just have to see on a short week if he can even go. I would not be surprised if Isaiah Likely is not active for this game, so we're going to see a lot more Charlie Kohler. Could even see maybe some Kadir Ismail pulled up if they want to pull up another tight end, but I think this is a big Mark Andrews game if Likely isn't out there. And then do the Ravens activate Keaton Mitchell for this game? If it's not 
this game. It's definitely that Pittsburgh game, but I'm kind of hoping it is this game. I think Keaton Mitchell is going to provide a lot of juice to this run game. Not that they necessarily need it, but he is an explosive home run hitting running back. And Harbaugh was asked about Keaton Mitchell's availability today. He said he'll play when he's ready and that there's a chance it'll be Thursday. So I don't know what to take from that. He's not really giving us a lot of information, but it is something to watch out for because if Keaton Mitchell's out there, that is another element to this offense along with the progression of Deontay Johnson. All this to say that I just do not see the Ravens offense getting slowed down in this game. It truly comes down to this Ravens defense stepping up and getting some stops against the Bengals. I think it's going to be an absolute shootout if T. Higgins is out there. I don't see us being able to really slow them down too much. We just can't generate much pressure right now and Chase or Higgins will have a mismatch if they're out there, you know, whether it's Stevens or Wiggins covering them, that Burrow's going to pick on them. If Higgins is not out there, I do have confidence that this Ravens team can slow the Bengals down quite a bit, hold them to mid-20s, and then the Ravens offense keeps rolling and scores 30-plus. But let's dive into a score prediction. I do have the Ravens winning this one 38-30. to I think the Ravens defense does step up a little bit, and this is whether Higgins plays or not. I kind of inflated my score a little bit. If Higgins is out of this game, if Orlando Brown Jr. is out of this game, then uh, I think the Bengals will score a little bit less. I think maybe 24 or something like that. But regardless, I got the Ravens winning this one. Even if Higgins is out there, I think the Bengals put up 30, and the Ravens offense keeps rolling to 38 at home in prime time, man. And I can't pick against my team when I'm going to the game. You know, I can't wait. Debuting the new purple helmets, the all purple uniforms from head to toe, man. It's going to be an electric atmosphere Thursday night, prime time at the bank. But let me know what your score predictions are, your general predictions about the game. Give me some bold predictions. How do you see this game playing out? It is always interesting the second time facing a team. I won't be able to have a trade video out today because I'm traveling. So drop in the comments and we'll have a big discussion about who we get or who we don't get or whatever's going on and how this impacts this game if that player is playing I don't expect anyone we trade for to play in this Thursday night game but if that is happening then obviously that could change things but I am pumped for the trade deadline man we need to add a pass rusher so that's what I'm rooting for and I appreciate you guys as always for tuning in to another episode of the flock rundown have a beautiful rest of your day go Ravens and I'll let the greatest linebacker in the history of the game take us out Ravens flock The flock rundown is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. The flock rundown. Nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly. Tune in. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim their way to sense, can't tame the untamed.